This video is the first part of the classification using machine learning and introduction to classifiers tutorial. This tutorial contains seven videos, overall. Machine learning can be broadly classified as supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. In supervised learning, there is sufficient labeled data to train a model that is the model learns from the training data to predict input query. This can be further divided into regression and classification. Regression can be used to predict continuous values. And, classification can be used to predict the classes of an input query. This tutorial series specifically deal with classification model generation and some of the important classifiers. In unsupervised learning, a model uses the data that is fed to the model using some algorithms to understand the data without any external training. And, in reinforcement learning. We don't have the data. The model acquires the data in real time and accepts or rejects an action depending upon the results obtained. Classification is a type of supervised learning. It is a systematic approach to build classification models from the labeled data set, that we call training data. To predict class labels of new data. To build an efficient classification model, you need to process the training data. Steps to process training data are Data pre-processing that transforms raw data into an understandable format. Feature extraction extracts features from the raw data using linear or non-linear mappings. Feature fusion techniques combine features obtained from different modalities. Feature selection methods find most productive feature set. Normalization of data involves data scaling algorithms for uniformity. There can be different types of training and testing mechanisms to build a classification model. One important thing models must avoid overfitting or underfitting, you will learn it in detail later. Finally, classification models can be divided into binary, multiclass, or one-class classification model. Next, you will learn data processing techniques in detail. Data preprocessing techniques involve data cleaning that can be utilized to fill missing values, smooth noisy data. Identify or remove outliers, and resolve inconsistencies. Next, data integration can be used for the integration of multiple databases, data cubes, or files. Data transformation is used for data normalization and aggregation. Data reduction obtains reduced representation in volume but produces the same or similar analytical results. Lastly, data discretization is a part of data reduction but with particular importance, especially for numerical data. Feature extraction is an attribute or feature reduction process to generate a new reduced set of features. You must note that it is not the same as the feature selection. Feature extraction can be achieved by mapping of the original high-dimensional data of size n onto a lower dimensional space of size d such that d is much less than n. Feature reduction techniques use linear and nonlinear algorithms. Some of the linear algorithms are Principal component analysis Linear discriminant analysis Latent semantic indexing Canonical correlation analysis and Partial least squares And, some of the nonlinear algorithms are Nonlinear feature reduction using kernels and manifold learning Feature fusion is the process of combining two or more feature vectors to obtain a single feature vector they can be broadly classified into fusion before mapping and fusion after mapping. The very basic type of fusion before mapping is the sensor level fusion, in which, simply the raw data from sensors are combined. Then, this combined data is fed to the matching module where the feature values are compared against those in the template by generating a matching score. Subsequently, in decision making module a user's identity is established or a claimed identity is either accepted or rejected based on the matching score generated in the matching module. In feature level fusion, the features are first extracted from each raw data, separately. Afterward, these feature vectors are combined to form a composite feature vector which is further used for classification purposes. Matching score level fusion is a type of fusion after mapping. In this, each feature vectors are processed separately and the individual matching score is determined. 
Finally, these matching scores are combined to make classification depending on the accuracy of each biometric trait. This is also, known as confidence level fusion. These scores can be combined to assert the veracity of the claimed identity. Techniques such as logistic regression may be used to combine the scores reported by the two sensors. These techniques attempt to minimize the false rejection rate for a given false acceptance rate. In decision level fusion, each sensor can capture multiple users' data and the resulting feature vectors individually classified into the two classes, accept or reject. Schemes like the majority vote scheme can be used to make the final decision. Feature selection is a process to find the most productive feature subset. Features are ranked according to their predictive significance. It is certainly different from feature extraction process, that reduces the attributes or features for better understanding. Some of the benefits of feature selection are To reduce dimensionality and remove noise To improve classification model performance by speeding the learning, and improving predictive accuracy Feature selection methods can be classified as a filter method, wrapper method, and embedded method. The three edges of the triangles depict the techniques deployed in feature selection methods. The three techniques are Evaluation criterion estimation uses cross-validation Checks performance bound Or perform statistical tests Evaluation criterion definition use relevance of every single feature, or in context to each other Or a feature subset relevance It also applied performance learning Feature subset search and generation use exhaustive search. Heuristic or stochastic search. Apply single feature ranking by nesting subset, forward selection or backward elimination. Filter methods discover productive features based on their merit scores that can be obtained in statistical tests. Such as, Pearson's correlation, linear discriminant analysis, and analysis of variance, for their correlation with the outcome variable. Filter methods are generally used as a preprocessing step. It is comparatively faster and classifiers independent. The common used filter methods are relief-based selection. Correlation-based methods. Pearson, and. Mutual information filters. Wrapper methods use a subset of features to train a model. Wrapper methods are typically iterative and computationally intensive. This method adds or removes features from a subset by comparing the current results with previous ones. The commonly used wrapper methods are Forward feature selection Backward feature elimination, and Recursive feature elimination Embedded methods combine the qualities of filter and wrapper feature selection methods. An intrinsic model building metric is used during learning. Both wrapper and embedded methods classifier dependent, but later are more computationally efficient. The combination of the wrapper and filter methods is also called as hybrid methods. The commonly used embedded methods are decision trees, and artificial neural networks. There can be different types of data, for example, audio signals or pixel values for image data. Typically, these data have multiple dimensions. Therefore, data normalization techniques are used for making the data uniform. We describe some of the popular data normalization techniques. Min-max normalization retains the original distribution of scores except for a scaling factor and transforms all the scores into a common range between 0 and 1. However, this method is not robust as the method is highly sensitive to outliers. Z-score normalization is the most commonly used technique, which is calculated using the arithmetic mean and standard deviation of the given data. However, both mean and standard deviation are sensitive to outliers, and this technique does not guarantee a common numerical range for the normalized scores. Moreover, if the input scores are not Gaussian distributed, this technique does not retain the input distribution at the output. TAN-H estimators use TAN-H formula as shown here. They are robust and highly efficient. MATLAB provides these data normalization functions. You can watch our PR Tools tutorial videos to see the examples. A classification model must have the ability to generalize. Learning the training data too precisely usually leads to poor classification results on new data. Therefore, it is important to avoid underfitting and overfitting. 
if the model is too simple to represent all the relevant class characteristics, it will show high bias and low variance. And the result will be high training error and an equal number of errors during testing. However, if the model is too complex and fits irrelevant characteristics in the data, it will show low bias and high variance. And the result will be low training error but high test error. Thus, it is important to design a fit model that neither underfits nor overfits. The multi-class classification model is designed for classification of more than two classes. Typically, classes are mutually exclusive. And, each new instance belongs to a single class. Some of the widely used classifiers for a multi-class classification model are native Bayes, K nearest neighbor decision tree, and logistic regression. The binary classification model classifies the objects into one of two types. For examples. Is email spam or not spam? Is the credit card transaction fraudulent or genuine? The two classes are often referred to as the positive class and the negative class. Some of the widely used classifiers for a binary classification model are state vector machine logistic regression, and perceptrons. The one-class classification model is trained only with positive samples of a single class. Not between multiple classes, or with the positive and negative samples of the same class. They are best suited for the cases where a class data is abundant. They are also called a novelty or anomaly detector. Widely used classifiers for the one-class model are support vector, k-means auto-encoder, and Gaussian density-based classifier. I hope, you enjoyed watching this tutorial. Interested viewers can watch more videos of this tutorial series. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to my channel and like the video.